So the bullish fundamental case for gold has never been stronger. Uh, the debt situation here is simply un unrepayable. It's just there's a four letter word for why the US government debt can never be repaid. And that four letter word is math. It's simply not possible. They can either default honestly or default by inflation. History suggests that 100% of the time throughout all of history, governments and central planners choose to default through inflation. Gold is the prime beneficiary of that. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and this is the Miles Franklin Weekly Special for October 16th through October 23rd, 2023, while supplies last. This week we feature three different specials. One ounce Silver Morgan Rounds from CNT at $2.09 over spot. One tenth ounce Gold Maples at $25 over melt, with a minimum order of five. And one tenth ounce Platinum Britannia at $29.99 over melt, with a minimum order of five. First, the Morgan Round from CNT celebrates the classic Morgan dollar and one full troy ounce of silver. At just $2.09 over spot, it's a great way to stack 4 nines fine one ounce silver. The Royal Canadian Mint is one of the most trusted mints in the world, and the 4 nines fine gold maple is their premier coin. The 1 tenth ounce maple adds a further degree of flexibility and liquidity. Rather than tubes, they come 40 to a sheet and are available at just $25 over melt while supplies last. Finally, the 1 tenth ounce Platinum Britannia offers a flexible way to get into Platinum, which currently boasts a spot price significantly lower than its ordinary ratio with gold, and many consider it to be highly undervalued. Better yet, the 1 tenth ounce Britannia is just $29.99 over melt, with a minimum order of 5. All of our specials this week are IRA eligible. And if you'd like to learn more about a precious metals IRA, call us, and we'll be happy to help you in that process. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Hey everyone, this is Elijah K. Johnson with Liberty and Finance. And back with us today is our good friend Steve Penny from the SilverChartist.com. Our affiliate link with him is SilverChartistLiberty.com. Thank you so much for joining us today, Steve. You bet. Thanks for inviting me back, Elijah. We've been trying to connect for a little bit here and glad we're able to make it happen. Definitely. It's always great to have you on and also get your analysis on the markets. I did want to get your perspective on kind of the wild ride we've been seeing in gold and silver right now. It seems like we're seeing a bit of a pop in the last few days here. What do you make of what's happening? Yeah, one, one of our maxim is, maxims at Silver Chartist is to use volatility to your advantage, right? And we've certainly seen that across many sectors this year. Uh, but especially gold and silver. So we've been kind of using that volatility to our advantage, scaling in on pullbacks and then scaling out or taking partial profits on when, once you get overbought against resistance. So I really liked that pullback last week or going back the last couple of few weeks where we got down almost a key support at 1810 in gold, flushed out all of the uh, you know momentum chasing speculators. People were ready to throw in the towel again. And that's often the best pace to, place to buy as you know bottoms are often carved out. So uh, I have a pretty high level of confidence that that low that we saw about a week ago was the low. And I think we're going to start to see higher highs and higher lows from here. This price action late last week was certainly very encouraging. And can you show with us uh, with the charts what's making you confident that we will continue to see higher highs and higher lows? Sure. So I like to say fundamentals tell me what to buy. Technicals tell me when to buy. So the bullish fundamental case for gold has never been stronger. Uh, the debt situation here is simply un unrepayable. It's just there's a four letter word for why the U.S. government debt can never be repaid. And that four letter word is math. It's simply not possible. They can either default honestly or default by inflation. History suggests that 100 percent of the time throughout all of history, governments and central planners choose to default through inflation. Gold is the prime beneficiary of that. So the fundamentals are extremely bullish for gold. I think we're much I think almost everyone can agree we're much closer to the end of this rate hike campaign cycle than we are to the beginning. Um, hey, maybe they do another one. I don't know. But we're, we're pretty close to the end here. That's going to be another tailwind for gold. And I think we can all agree that the economy is on the brink here. The financial markets are on the brink. Everything is highly unstable. That all bodes well for gold. And then you pair that with the technical picture and you have a very compelling setup. So here's a longer term chart for gold. This goes back um, all the way to 2007. And what you see here is a beautiful cup and handle pattern. And What's really nice about these patterns, you can get different, they call measured move targets. And it's very simple. You can just take the handle portion of this cup and flip it over. So that's about 475 bucks, $469 to be exact from top to bottom. 
So once we break above 2089, once that happens, the most conservative measured move target becomes about $2,500. So you just add the 469 to 2089. So let's just call it 2,500. Uh, another way to do it, which is equally valid, is just take the cup portion here, or excuse me, uh, yeah, the cup portion, and flip that over. And that would give you a measured move target up around $3,000 gold. Once we break through 2089, I think those are very realistic targets and you know, very much in alignment with what we've seen in previous bull markets in the past. Now, when you zero in on the daily chart and take a closer look at gold, um, anyone who's been following me for any length of time knows, you know, I talk a lot about the 200-day moving average. It's a very simple, you know, overlay to put on your chart, but it's so important because all of these bankers, all of the institutions and managed money, um, you know, high net worth individuals, they look at the 200-day moving average. In fact, some of the wealthiest investors in the world, like Paul Tudor Jones, they have no interest in stocks or equities trading below 200-day moving average. So that's, that's why it's so important. And last Friday's pop took us right above that 200-day, and now we're consolidating right at it. Um, that 200-day moving average is now resistance, and that coincides with this downtrend channel. So it's going to be key test right now. Right here, right now, we're facing a key test to see if we can get above that. It's currently 1939. That's the level to watch. A break above there would add confirmation from a technical basis perspective that, hey, the lows are in. We're now breaking, uh, you know, uh, confirming a technical reversal. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of a pullback here. And I outlined here what I put labeled a potential path. I wouldn't put too much stock in that because nobody knows the exact path. You know, if you could lay out a path like that with precision consistently, <laughs> you know, you'd, you'd be retired on a beach somewhere. But I, that does seem like a logical path. You know, a little bit of a pullback, breakout, back test, and then on our way to new all-time highs sometime, maybe later this year or early into next year. That's kind of my um, baseline scenario for right now. Now, as for silver, when I look at the chart, it seems like we're still seeing lower highs and uh, lower lows. But do you have confidence that we're about to break out of the trend channel right now? I do. If, if, if gold breaks out, silver is going to follow. That's just the way it always goes. Yeah, the chart for silver does look weaker. And, uh, you know, the, the, the underperformance of silver does suggest that some of the strength we're, strength we're seeing now is largely a flight to safety and fears of geopolitics going on in the Middle East. And that's a concern because often, you know, geopolitical events, as serious as they may be and as real as they may be, when it comes to the price of gold, you tend to get a pop and then you give back a lot of that. Um, so that's a short term concern. But, you know, I, I am confident for all the reasons laid out before that gold is going to break out. Um, in the weeks and months ahead. And if so, you can fully expect silver to follow. And when it comes to the technical per picture here, and by the way, technicals are so important because that, that's what the big money uses. These algorithms, these institutions follow technicals. There was, was this very clear uptrend channel and we lost support there. Came down and tested support right around 20. And now we're trying to reclaim what was uh, support is now resistance. So that, that's the longer term chart for silver. When you zero in on the daily chart, we just mentioned gold was at the 200 day. Silver's not even there yet. It's still, you know, um, 50 cents or so below its 200 day moving average and trying to clear its own downtrend channel. I'm confident that's going to happen. Um, so silver has much more upside potential than gold, of course. But, you know, it's it's a little bit further from confirming a technical reversal, although I'm confident that's going to happen. And and with silver, you know, a lot of people say, hey, I'm going to wait for the technical reversal um, to to get in. Well, it moves so fast, you know, you, you can get a four or five, another, a couple of four or five percent up days in a short period of time, and then you miss the majority of, you know, a short term move and you end up chasing. So for, for me, I like to buy when people are despondent, um, that, that's the time to buy silver and, and we're, we're not far off the low. So I think it's still a very good buying opportunity. Now, as for the U.S. dollar, I know that can also be a signal of where precious metals are going to be heading. Can you share your perspective on that? Yeah, Absolutely. I always like to give the caveat that, you know, uh, as your listeners know, and I know you know, it's totally possible and there's precedent for the dollar and gold to rally in unison. We saw that on Friday. I mean, that's just one day, but, you know, uh, gold, the dollar can be the beneficiary of the fear trade as well. So it doesn't mean just because the dollar might go up that gold and silver are going to go down. I look at it as like a headwind or tailwind. But yeah, the dollar's in an uptrend. It's made higher highs, higher lows. A key level to watch if you want to kind of commit some short-term numbers to memory, if you're, you know, trading or looking for, you know, uh, precision entries, a dollar, a one hundred five eighty-eight. That was big resistance. Now it's support. If we lose one hundred five eighty-eight, um, 
then the next support level is this 200 day moving average, which is now beginning to slope upwards. Um, we lose that 200 day, then you could say, hey, we're back in a downtrend in the dollar. But for right now, um, the dollar, the trend is up. However, unlike gold, you know, where you could say you got the fundamentals, the sentiment, COT data, technicals are all in your favor. With the dollar, I would argue that, you know, some of those factors are, uh, you know, are going to weigh on the dollar. You know, it's hard to make a fundamentally bullish case for the dollar, in my opinion. Now, I know a lot of people are concerned about the stock market right now, if we want to shift to that, because we have been seeing lower uh, lows and lower highs in the past uh, few weeks here. And, and people are concerned that this could be kind of the second phase of the crash that we saw uh, really starting in the beginning of 2022. Uh, your perspective on what is happening right now? Yeah. So with the, with the stocks, I mean, stocks remain historically overvalued relative to hard assets. So I think we all know that, especially gold. It's nice to see gold kind of breaking out against the stock market, which is what we want to see. Because when gold out begins to outperform general equities, that catches the attention of generalists, you know, big money who aren't gold bugs like us. They just see some relative outperformance and they say, hey, I want some of that. I want increased exposure. Um, so that's encouraging. That said, I think it might be premature to call you know the the next big decline in the stock market right now. The trend is still up. We're above a rising 200-day moving average. You can see this channel right here. This is a shorter-term channel. It goes back to October of 2022. So I guess it's not that short term. It's uh, about a year long now. And we've been rising within the confines of this channel. Every time we come down to the lower rail, we get a bounce. And last week was no different. The 200-day moving average is coincident with the lower rail of that channel. Until and unless that fails, I think it's a bit premature to talk about the next stock market crash. That is coming. It's coming. There's no doubt about that. But I, I'm, I'm just not sure we get that yet. I think when the Fed says the word pause, which is coming sometime soon, I, I would expect, um, that could see, um, you know, s stocks could be a beneficiary of that as well as a lot of risk on assets, you know, b before their inevitable, you know, precipitous decline. But I, I wouldn't be surprised to see more, sh more strength in the general equities market. Do you see new highs coming, though, in the near future? New all-time highs? To, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'll just be honest. I don't know, but I would be very surprised to see that. Um, the all-time high was up around 4820. Um, the previous high was 4600. That seems much more attainable, you know, rally up towards 4600. And then from there, if we break above 4600, yeah, then 4800 comes into play. Um, a plausible scenario that I would love to see as a trader is a rally up towards 4,800, the previous all-time high, where you're technically overbought, everyone's euphorically optimistic again. To me, that would make a great shorting opportunity if and when that happens. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be playing that one by year. And I know on uh, Silver Chartist, you look at silver, gold, and uranium. Uranium has definitely made a move that a lot of people, including yourself, have been looking for for quite a while. Your perspective on this recent move and obviously uh, quite a bit of a pullback we've seen recently. Yes. Yeah. Uranium has been a lot of fun to, to, to actively invest or actively trade. I'm talking about you speaking of using volatility to our advantage, you know, um, this chart was just annotated previously, but way back in 2021, I sold a third of my positions up here, gradually scaled back in, um, you know, in weakness for the last year and a half. And I've been t honestly taking profits up, up near the recent peak. And we've got a nice 20, 30% pullback in a lot of uh, uranium equities. So I think for those looking to increase exposure, you know, uh, we're pulling back to about the 50 day moving average on the daily chart for a lot of these stocks. So I think it could be a good place to scale back in. Although it's, it's still, you know, um, I, I like to buy, like I said, when everyone's despondent and that was back down here. That said, I think there's a lot of room to run here. You know, uranium is still right around $70. I think it's going to the previous high of 150 and beyond this cycle. Um, there's going to be a lot of volatility along the way. So for uranium investors, here's what I would caution. Uh, I'll sp first speak to the people who have been in it for a while. Your, the, your emotions are the hardest thing to manage, uh, especially with commodity bull markets, which are extremely volatile. So back when uranium was $20, let's just say you ha had exposure when uranium was 20. I know a lot of people did. And I said, hey, what are you going to do when uranium gets up to 70? They'd probably say, oh, I'll take a little bit off the table. Well, we're there now. And the, to most investors, the idea of taking just a little bit off the table is like, no way. Why would I do that? Even though if you ask them back when it was 20, they'd say, yeah. So I would say have an exit strategy. That's my point. Have an exit strategy for all of these cyclical investments and stick to it. 
uh, the goal is not to nail the exact top or nail the exact bottom to kind of scale out into strength and scale in on weakness. That's how we approach it. And I think there's a lot of room to run in uranium, but use that volatility to your advantage. Don't just sit and hold until I think you're going to top tick, you know, uh, the, the very last five, 10 percent. That's very good. I mean, I think back in, you know, 2011 or so when silver was peaking out around $50, a lot of people were uh, jumping in at that time, but you know, (laughs) it still hasn't gotten back uh, to that price. If we could uh, end with precious metals right now, just kind of the price points you're looking at right now, if you could remind our viewers. Yeah, I'll just go with the kind of big picture numbers Um, with for silver. Big support to watch is the most recent low. That's just a general principle. Whenever you carve out a low, that lo- recent most recent low is support. Very simple. So I think the recent low going from memory was about $20.18, something like that. So just above 20, call it just above $20. That's big support. So you can say, hey, if we're going to get a dip towards there, that's where I'm going to scale in aggressively. Uh, the big resistance levels to watch would be the 200-day moving average. We just talked about that. And then the big ones are 26.50, 27.50. And then the the high for the last few years, going back to 2020, is $30.35. Just like 2089 in gold, $30.35, getting above that level is kind of the key that unlocks significantly higher prices, you know, where you can start talking about high 40s and $50 silver again. $30.35, that's kind of the big number to watch. I mean, we're, we're still down in the low 20s. So we've got a long ways to go to get there. But that's a number I would commit to memory. Uh, with gold, 2089. That's the big resistance level. We're not too far from that. Once we punch through that and close above it and stay above there for a week or two, that unlocks 2,500, potentially 3,000 or even more over the intermediate term in gold. And then support is the most recent low. Uh, 1820 or so was the most recent low. Below there is 1810. Any any pullbacks towards that level, uh, that's where I'm personally scaling in aggressively. Fantastic. And kind of your out long-term outlook then for precious metals and, and how people should be playing this. Cause obviously you can trade precious metals, but I think it's also important to have kind of a long-term outlook and have precious metals, not just, you know, to make a quick profit, but, um, also as long-term savings. Yeah, that, that's such a good question. I, I love that question. I wish this was talked about more because a lot of newer investors come in with different objectives. And a lot of people want to you know, make a lot of money relatively quick. So they go to these junior mining stocks. Well, I think I like to say strategy is greater than predictions. Everyone should have a strategy to both accumulate and when to sell. So I'll kind of go in reverse order for me. For me, I have some physical metal stored outside of the banking system that I never intend to sell. Some of it. I intend to give it to my children and hopefully for their children and their children's children as a generational insurance policy. So that's some of it. Some of it, you know, because I've been ex- uh, accumulating for a long time now. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to have another portion that I plan to swap for undervalued assets when the time is right. I would love to eventually when the Dow gold ratio kind of normalizes where it's, it has in previous uh, bull market peaks, swap some gold and silver for dividend paying stocks like blue chip stocks that pay a big dividend, uh, rental real estate, things like that. And then when it comes to the mining stocks, uh, for me, it's. I actively invest them. When we get overbought against resistance, you got to take some off the table. When you get deeply oversold and everyone's ready to throw in the towel, that's when you scale in. So you got to be a little bit more nimble with those. Mining stocks are a real hard thing to just sit and buy and hold for the, you know, for a long, long period of time as their track record is really poor. But the, that they are very volatile, so you can use that to your advantage. Um, there's only um, two or three that I plan to hold, you know, for the next five, ten years. All right. And again, our um, affiliate link is silverchartistliberty.com. We'll put the link in the description of this video. Can you tell us a bit about your work over there? Sure. It's, it's very simple. Um, it's a little bit different than other services. It's called a fully transparent over-the-shoulder service with real-time alerts. I know that's a mouthful, but the intent is for to show our members exactly what I'm doing. My exact strategy, the stocks I own. And whenever I push the buy or sell button, I send out a real-time alert with an explanation of why I'm doing what I'm doing. The intent isn't just to follow me because I'm far from perfect, but hopefully by seeing someone who's been doing this for 15 plus years, it helps you to make better investing and trading decisions in your own account. So that that's the intent. And uh, we've got also got a really great community of people uh, that are there to support each other. Our motto is time and freedom to pursue life's higher callings, things of eternal significance. We're doing this not just because we want to make a bunch of money and go buy a bunch of stuff. We want time freedom to do pursue the things we've been put on this earth to do. And uh, I think that's another thing that makes it a really unique group. 
Fantastic, Steve. Thank you so much for your time and God bless. Thanks, Elijah. Miles Franklin Precious Metals is one of America's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers. Miles Franklin is a rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us, discuss your needs, and we can let you know our live inventory, prices, and availability, and lock in your order over the phone. Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations, and the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by bank wire, ACH or electronic check, money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, Metals will ship out within three to five business days. You will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. The package will be boxed, fully insured, and labeled discreetly, with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Kaiser, my brother Elijah, or my father Dunnigan, call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.